welcome back. We are in the studio today here at Davis Media Access in Davis, California. You know, Davis is a place that really likes its local control and its sustainability. There are a lot of different examples. The city right now, I, I serve on a task force that is currently exploring the feasibility of, of municipal broadband. That's one example. This very organization, Davis Media Access, actually grew out of an innovative experiment in consumer-owned cable co-op. So there's a lot of things that happen in Davis, but right now, the one that's on the table is Valley Clean Energy, and we're gonna learn more about that today. And here to discuss it with me are Mitch Sears, who is the general manager of Valley Clean Energy, and Lucas Frerichs, who in addition to being on the Davis City Council, that role he is uh, serving as the chair of the board. So welcome to you both. Thanks for coming in today. So I've actually been, uh, Valley Clean Energy launches in June, and it is going to be an alternative to what we currently have in our energy delivery um, systems for our, for our homes, for our businesses. And um, I've been talking to a couple of people about it this week, and I, I keep hearing a couple of key questions come up. So I'm hoping we can get through those today. Let's start with what it is and a little bit of the backstory of how we got here. How long ago did this process start? Yeah, well, thanks so much again for oh, you, uh, you hosting today and also for Davis Media Access producing the show. We really, really appreciate that. Um, the uh, so Valley Clean Energy started actually, uh, you know, as an official joint powers authority, right, a few years ago, with uh, the city of Davis, the city of Woodland, and, and Yolo County joining together to, as in a partnership and a collaboration. Uh, but it actually predates that even a little bit. A few years ago, the city of Davis was working on its uh, sort of updating its climate action plan goals. Right. And one of the major ways that we feel that the, the ability for Davis to be sustainable over the long run is to have greater control over uh, sort of how we generate energy and the types of energy we generate, uh, including, you know, maybe protect like more renewable sources of energy, solar, wind, things like that. So uh, we sort of an offshoot of that. So started several years ago, probably in the sort of 2010, 2012, 2014 made some iterative progress over those years but we <coughs> excuse me actually really formed as an organization about two years ago at this point and we uh, we launch in June it's gonna be really great so let's talk about what Valley Clean Energy is right now up until this point we've had basically one option to get um, energy services in Davis and that's been PG&E Valley Clean Energy what kind of options does this give us and how is it different from what we have yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, um, at the fundamental kind of base of this is that the board of directors of Valley Clean Energy, which are made up of two members of the Davis City Council, two of the City of Woodland City Council, and also two board of supervisor members, um, formed this program to introduce competition in the, into the electricity marketplace. Right, and I think we, yeah. we have a slide up right now too, so. Yeah, and, and so that explains, you know, this is, we're, we're going out into the public to try to get the word out about the program, which does launch in June. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the way that the state law set this up is to allow for local jurisdictions to aggregate all the electricity accounts within their jurisdictions, and then go out on the wholesale energy market to buy power on behalf of those um, yeah. behalf of those customers. And so the the way that the program was set up and the intent is again to introduce competition into the marketplace. And the results of that are that we are able to offer competitively priced electricity um, in comparison to PG&E. Um, also, we're able to offer a higher renewable energy content mm -hmm. um, than PG&E as well as provide uh, uh, customer choice, both in terms of participating in our program or opting out for free to go back into PG&E. Right. But even within our program, there are options to be able to opt up to what we call um, ultra green, which is 100% renewable energy. Um, and then the, also, the, one of the other really important parts about this is the local control aspect. Mm -hmm. Decisions are made here at the local level by the board of directors, by Lucas and, and uh, other board members um, at local meetings where the public can come and participate. Right. So I want to come back in a second to the, the, the choice about the various kinds of energy and renewable energy, because I, I was reading some comments on, online this week that said, well, it's only going to save us 2.5%. Two and right. why, why is that even worthwhile to change? And then someone else jumped in and talked about, well, it's about, about choice. So let's talk for a second about what consumer... Okay, so... Um, a homeowner in, in Davis uh, doesn't opt out of the program, they decide to go with Valley Clean Energy. What can they expect to see change in their bill over the course of the year and in the kinds of information coming at them? 
You want to start with the the billing and such? Yeah. yeah so the 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 billing itself, actually, PG&E is still uh, providing billing services. They okay. also provide transmission distribution services as well. So we all continue to be customers of PG&E. So. The bill itself, though, will look virtually identical. The only difference will be on the front page, rather than having PG&E's generation costs, right. it'll say Valley Clean Energy generation. So that'll be, really be the only difference. And one of the questions that we do encounter is, is that a double charge? Well, the answer to that is no, it's not a double charge. So anything that a customer, uh, Valley Clean Energy customer, would be paying to PG&E otherwise is now replaced by that um, by that generation charge for Valley Clean Energy. Okay. Yeah, and you know it's interesting the the board of directors that is made up of local elected officials in our county and our cities. Uh, we specifically set the the discount rate right, you know, beneath PG&E's rates at two and a half percent, right, for this cur first year of launch, right, when we first are launching. Yeah, and there was a reason for doing that, and that was to be a little bit more conservative financially. We wanted to make sure that the organization is launching and is successful, you know, as it as it launches, uh, and to make sure that we build up some of our reserves, cash mm -hmm. reserves, so we have the ability uh, to actually uh, sort of start to implement different types of programs in our communities over time, uh, things like energy efficiency, you know, upgrades for houses, uh, potentially uh, electric vehicle uh, charging, right? Mm -hmm. That's another area we are interested in, certainly. Uh, in the customers in Yolo County, there's a lot of agricultural customers, of course, and they may be interested in having a potentially different rate for, for agricultural use. So, I mean, there's right. a lot of different types of incentives that I think over time we will have the ability to work on offering our customers. Uh, you know, we certainly would like to offer a deeper discount than just 2.5%, mm -hmm. right? Right, but but for the first year we set it at two and a half percent. We had, and we had a really robust discussion at our board of directors about whether or not that was the right percentage. Should we be three percent? Should we be four percent? But we erred a little bit on the side of caution and a little bit less of a discount in the first year. Mm -hmm. uh, but over the long time, over the long term, we will be looking at that on an annual basis and, and ha making those adjustments. Right. And yeah. a apart from the pricing, I really want to ask you this question, Lucas, because so much of what you have your work has really centered on localism and local control of various systems. So uh, let's come back to that again. Why is that so important in the energy field? Oh yeah, I think it's, you know, I think it's important for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, f you know, that I know it's important to me and I think a lot of my other f colleagues in local government is that right now when you, you have to, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can participate with your energy provider, right? So PG&E provides electricity to us. Uh, they are headquartered in San Francisco. So if you have issues with them and you need to go to attend meetings, you literally have to go to San Francisco right. to attend a meeting. The California Public Utilities Commission, which oversees uh, in, uh, utilities in California, is also headquartered in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there are often many meetings, many public meetings that happen that where you would have to actually go to San Francisco in order to participate and have your voice heard uh, and as they are sort of making regulations and such around right. the state. Uh, you know, with Valley Clean Energy, we're doing that all here. Uh, the public meetings that are on a monthly, minimally at a monthly basis, for our board, monthly board meetings, and then we have a advi community advisory committee made up of members from all of our communities as well. Uh, those meetings are held right here in Yolo County. Um, they have been, they've been uh, uh, rotating between Davis City Hall uh, Woodland City Hall, and then the Yolo County Board of Supervisors, Board board Chambers. So, uh, you know, people have access, citizens and the ratepayers have access to the to the uh, decision makers at a very, clo you know, local level. So, I'm guessing yeah. the board is not comprised of shareholders either. That Yeah, that is also true. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is a, you know, one of the reasons that we have the ability to do uh, uh, discounts and things like that in terms of rates, discounted rate is that, you know, uh, we are, th this is for the benefit of our rate payers, yeah. our, you know, as opposed to, uh, PG&E has a model certainly where they're, they're doing a lot, you know, they're, they have a, they have their shareholders to be responsive to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to point out a couple of other things to add on to the rate question. Yeah. I mean, two and a half percent on an individual basis, that's, maybe doesn't add up to a whole lot, but we did do a calculation and it saves Yolo County customers almost $2 million a year in aggregate. And that is so not small potatoes. It's not small, yeah. small potatoes. And yeah. that, that money, as we've, you know, as you probably understand, does circulate locally um, sure. rather than leaving the community. So that's, that's one aspect that I think is important. Uh, another aspect that we think is important too on the local control side of things is that it, you know, the decisions are made at the local level and it goes to the, the point of even making rate decisions, which right now are out of our collective hands. Um, and that happens at the local level where you have board members 
who are accountable to their local communities. And so we think that that's a really important component of this. Right. So we all got a letter a few weeks ago that, that went out and that let us know that this is launching and um, you know if we want it to opt out, there is that option. I'm curious to know what kind of opt out rate you're experiencing. Yeah, seeing. so we're tracking that closely, as yeah. you can imagine. I bet you are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and we're really, we're actually have a, a real sort of benefit here, too. We're working under contract with SMUD, the Sacramento Municipal Utility District. Yeah. And they're providing a lot of our sort of back office work. So they're helping us with energy procurement on the wholesale energy market. They are helping us with doing analysis and budgeting. But also what they're doing is they're actually running our call center. Okay. So it's a local call center. And... Um, and those folks are available um, uh, at any time to, uh, there's hours and it's on our website to be able to, to call in. But that, that's one of the other sort of local aspects of this that we think is really quite important. Um, in terms of the, the opt-out numbers, um, we're seeing it running at just over 1%. So we're going to be serving somewhere over 60,000 accounts uh, if you add up um, you know, the three jurisdictions that we're covering. Right. And so right now we're we're about less seven, than a thousand. Yeah, about yeah. seven hundred, little over seven hundred accounts out of sixty thousand have chosen to right. opt out as far so. And as a comparison too, so we we talk to our other. So there's seventeen of these programs that are being established around the state right now. The estimate is that fifty percent of the electricity in California is going to be served through one of these programs within the next five years. Yeah. And so it's it's a big deal. And what we do is it allows us to, since we're all public agencies, all not-for-profit public agencies, yeah. returning values to the communities that we're serving. There's a real um, there's a real interest in sharing information amongst yeah. those 17 programs. So right now at this stage, um, the only way we can kind of gauge how we're how we're doing is in comparison to how other programs who've already launched. Right. And the one percent is actually performing quite well in comparison to how other programs have, have oh, yeah. launched. Great. So we're add. down to our last couple of minutes. Sure, so Lucas, sure. yeah. Oh, just yeah. I, um, I think you know it's also uh, I really want to emphasize that partnership with SMUD. Uh, right. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, SMUD, is known as one of the best utilities in the entire nation. And I they mean, know something about starting up a utility company. Precisely. Yeah. And, yeah. and operating one really right. well. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you know, it was uh, it, it was not surprising that our values aligned, right? Yeah. I mean, that we came to sort of an agreement with them. And, and while they are a contractor for Valley Clean Energy, uh, it, we were certainly are working close, very closely with them and regular, you know, reports and updates and, and with their key staff. Staff on, on this uh, as we move forward, which is a, somewhat of a difference uh, of, compared to some of the other uh, community choice energy programs around the state. Right, this is one of the, this is the first one to partner with uh, a utility such as SMUD. Um, Right. I know they, they brought up a, a graphic right now, too, that kind of talks about the, the difference of where, you know, where the energy comes from and who, who runs it and, and all of that. And I think we've touched on all of that. Yeah. Any, any last things that you want people to know as they're making their decision this month, whether, whether to go with Valley Clean Energy or remain with PG&E? So from my perspective, first of all, you don't have to do anything to enjoy the, the savings that we offer, right. the higher renewable energy content. We're at 42 percent renewable. The, cut, the option to opt up to 100% renewable um, for uh, a little bit of a premium mm -hmm. and this local control um, aspect. So I think that those are the, the basic things that we're going out and talking to people. Just one real quick thing too, we've done close to 100 outreach meetings over mm -hmm. the course of the past couple of years to yeah. try to get word out. We're on social media. We have um, a presence. We, we had a newspaper mailer that went out in the Davis Enterprise yep. and the Daily Democrat, the Sacramento Bee. Um, so we're trying, we know people are really busy, um, but we're trying to get word out to, as, through as many channels It has as not possible. gone unpublicized. I have Good. noticed yeah, that. Yeah. That's so. great. We and also, I, I would just, one other quick yeah. point. Uh, we've also, you will be receiving, so you received your first notice, right. you know, a few weeks ago, but we have several other notices that are legally required by the state that will be coming in the subsequent weeks. So people will be continuing to hear more about uh, the launch of Valley Clean Energy right. and the ability to, you know, to, to be a customer of ours. Yeah. And I just want to steer people to the website too, which is valleycleanenergy.org. You can go there. You can find out more about 
how this project came about, who's involved with yeah. it, and, uh, and answers to frequently asked questions. So I want to thank uh, both Lucas and Mitch for joining us here today. And I hope you'll come back down the road and let us know how it's going. And um, you know, maybe we can uh, celebrate at the end of the, the first year of operation and, and touch base. So but thanks for coming in today. Great. And thanks for the work you're doing. Thanks so much for having us. You have been watching in the studio here at Davis Media Access. And my thanks to Diane Dadashka for directing and to our wonderful volunteer crew today, Chris and William and Madeline. Thank you very much.